your time is now, old man. AI has gotten wild in recent months. And, oh my god, this chair's reclined too far. And I think... I think it's something that's worth talking about with recent developments. Now, if you've stayed in the loop with what's happening with AI, this information probably won't surprise you, or you'll probably just think, wow, that's come a bit sooner than I thought it would. I don't even know where to really start with this, so I'm just going to go in raw dog with this one. Yesterday, OpenAI held their, their last kind of 12 days of Christmas event, and what they'd been doing is showing off new features, new developments in AI, and they ended on an absolute bombshell, which is, as many of you will know, there has been a race for general artificial intelligence. For those who want a kind of very brief explanation, the difference between artificial intelligence and artificial general intelligence is AI is basically trained on predefined answers and understanding what ties in as an answer to the question you're given. It's a kind of word-by-word -word predictive model that fills in the blanks as it goes until you get an answer, right? And it, it works. Artificial general intelligence basically gives AI a way to think, reason, and have rationale to, to the answers it gives. And for many, many years, people have said, well, this is way, way off. We're, like, we're not going to see this for decades. And for the most part, people have agreed with this. It seems like a pipe dream. However, in yesterday's video, now I just want to clarify, this isn't an announcement of artificial general intelligence, but it is on the cusp of exactly that, which is, it's pretty, pretty interesting and... I don't think a lot of people understand the implications of this yet. Uh, myself included. I'm not, I'm not going to pretend to be the almighty prophet that knows exactly what this means or where this is going to go. Because as I've discussed, a lot of us felt like we had a lot more time before this happened. But um, l let's jump into this. So essentially, OpenAI announced O3, their new model of ChatGPT. Um... Not to be confused with the O2 model that doesn't actually exist. They went straight from O1 to O3. Uh, apparently something to do with trademark because of the the mobile phone company O2. That would make sense because it would literally be word for word the same name in a tech company, which is enough overlap to say, yeah, you probably could cause confusion. Now, they released some benchmarks, which I'm going to pull up. Okay, now I'm going to pull up a few of the benchmarks from this AI that I think will blow people's minds. And b before I discuss these, I, I really want to highlight something. I've noticed that whenever I talk about AI, there are people that get very angry because they think I'm an AI shill, when all I'm doing is I'm talking about the statistic evidence that is coming out about things in AI. I, I find it interesting to talk about and I think it's really good that people are informed on the developments of AI so that less people are having the wool pulled over their eyes when it comes to AI being used in scams or being deceptive. I, I think it's good to know about it and to know its current stance, its state and its development, right? And then there's other people that are like, oh, Cal, you're just, you're just shitting all over AI. And it, it's like, no, I, I'm just discussing it. The, the, the pros, the cons the positive development and the negative developments because I find it really interesting. So this first benchmark is honestly kind of horrifying in the sense that it's got this far this quick. So these are for software engineering and coding. Uh, this is the, the first one here is the SWE benchmark. Uh, and this is showing the difference between O1, which was already a kind of leaps and bounds ahead model in comparison to O3, O1 scored 48.9 on its full released version. O3 has scored 71.7. And there's a saying that I see a lot of people mock, but it, it is kind of true, which is this is the worst it's ever going to be. This is the worst AI will ever be because it because it is consistently progressing and getting better at doing things. In and this next one is something that I think will blow the minds of anyone who is understanding what this benchmark is, and I will try to do my best to explain it. Competitive code, uh, code forces. 
competitive coding is where people are given a small time frame, usually 60 seconds. They are given a problem to solve using written code by themselves as efficiently and quickly as possible. The program will then run their code and compare it to the optimal solution to that problem. And Google run um, basically competitive code challenges very frequently as a hiring process. And competitive coding has, just like um, Grandmaster Chess does, an ELO like ranking system. O1, their previous model, scored 1891, which is already really impressive. O3 has just scored 2727. Now, I'm going to put this into a perspective for people. 2727 is an absolute hair's width away or below the top ranked competitive coders. You'll notice the chart ends at 3000. There are very few people who have scored 3000. The average high-end competitive code uh, ELO is around 2650. The O3 model is beating some of the top programmers in competitive code. And to me, that is absolutely mind-boggling, but it gets wilder. For the last couple of years, there has always been a kind of conflicting um, idea here. And that is that benchmarks aren't suitable for AI. Because AI is researching and kind of like storing all this info and then just regurgitating it when that problem comes up. A, a new benchmark called ARC was generated, or it was created to be able to test for artificial general intelligence. And I'm going to give a very quick example of this. So the best way to test for artificial general intelligence is to give problems that are generated on the fly. And that is done with these inputs and outputs. Essentially, to test an AI's intelligence and its thought capability and its reasoning and its understanding, the AI is shown by the ARC benchmark, an input image and an output image. And this is just one example. They're not all like this. Also, these are not publicly available, so the AIs can't be trained on these. And essentially, what the AI has to do is look at this input image on the left, the output image on the right, and specify a set of rules that govern these two images that will allow programmatically to get from input A to output A. So for example, it can be something as simple as, well, on the input image, any squares that are blue should be moved upwards five squares. Any that are yellow should be moved up five squares and any that are red should be moved up two. That's probably not the rule set for this, but that's an example. Like me and you looking at this, we go through a thought process and we actually reason with logic as to how we can achieve that. And there's a lot of different ones of these in different formats. And this is how AI is now being benchmarked for artificial general intelligence. And this is where the results become astounding. On this benchmark, O1, remember the previous model that launched, that launched mid 2024, so about six, seven months ago, that scored 13.33% on this AGI ARC test. Humans with above average intelligence, uh, apparently it's somewhere around PhD level, are scoring around 78%, which is impressive, right? Because that, that is showing in logical thinking and intelligence. The highly tuned version of O3 has just scored 88%. That is above average human intelligence in an AI when it comes to logic, reasoning, and process. Now, as I've said, I don't know what this means for the, the future of this. But all I do know is that the, the saying of this is the worst AI will ever be is seemingly holding true. It is progressively getting better and better at more diverse tasks day by day. Well, not even day by day, minute by minute. And to take a monumental jump from the 01 on high performance going from 32% to O3 on high performance going to 88%, that is a, that's a quantum leap in AI in such a short period of time. Now, this is where you're probably all looking and thinking, well, the bottom axis on this graph is cost per task. And yeah, it is. 
cost per task is uh, really high on this. So to run a single task on O3 on high performance, it is over a thousand dollars. And that is like costing electricity. You know, this whole example everyone keeps giving of, oh, uh, a single message on chat GPT is the equivalent of wasting a bottle of water. Well, if that's a bottle of water, this is uh, many, many, many Olympic swimming pools just being dumped. But on the other hand, and this is the interesting part to me, they've also announced and will be releasing O3 Mini which is a little more limited than O3 will be. And that is apparently still scoring around the 60 to 65% mark with a cost just above the O1 model. So O3 regular is going to be something that's kind of, that I think is going to be kind of reserved for academic use and scientific research, all that sort of stuff. Meanwhile, O3 Mini is still more expensive to run in the grand scheme of things, but it is way more capable than anything we have today. And honestly, I am kind of intrigued by this. I, I find it very interesting. I think it's going to do a lot of good things, and I think it's also going to lead to a lot of bad things, as I've said in previous videos. And of course, this is putting aside the ethics of how things are trained. That's a separate discussion, and it is a... It is a discussion that I understand why people are having, and I, I understand it. I really do. I don't agree with the way many of these AIs are trained. But at the end of the day, the ethics of this isn't going to stop AI. Like, these pre-trained data sets are out there. Many other AIs are spawning out of this. It, it, it's an unfortunate inevitability that that is how these were going to be trained, and that is what's happened. And it's kind of like... You can't really put the toothpaste back in the tube at this point. But I'd, I'd love to know what you guys think about this and where you think this is all going to be in a year's time. Because even I think even a year's time is like a far stretch in the in the kind of timeline of AI. But yeah, that's that's what I wanted to talk about today because I just find it super interesting, even if it is kind of a little bit terrifying at times. Um, and speaking of that, there is something else I want to talk about. So if this AI video or this AI topic isn't your kind of thing, I have been fascinated by the New Jersey and frankly at this point worldwide drone phenomena that's taking place. And a lot of the weirdness around it, including both stories coming from people, some of the absolutely bizarre sightings that have taken place. And so next video I'm going to be chatting about that because I've got some really interesting thoughts and opinions, I guess. I know you're not allowed an opinion on the internet anymore, but because I genuinely think it's a really fascinating thing that's happening right now. But that is all for today, ladies and gents. I hope you're having a fantastic Christmas period or whatever holiday you celebrate this time of year. And as always, a massive thank you to the patrons. And until next time, take care.